And we are live. Good morning, Crypto yeah. Warriors, and welcome back to Gem and Crypto, episode 192. Today is Wednesday, June 20th, and I'm King. And I'm Bitcoin Z, and we're here to bridge the gap between cryptocurrency and the community Monday through Friday at 10 -ish. At, at 10, 10 -ish. Definitely a 10 -ish day. It's a 10 -ish day. What's going on, everybody? It's all good. Let this room fill up here. It's mm -hmm. chat room. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Again, for those watching us live on YouTube, we are attempting to fix this lag. We know you see it. We see it too, and it's aggravating us. <laughs> One of our, uh, what's called it? What is those things called? One of our trolls pointed out the other day, but they had a point. Yeah. It was pretty bad. Oh, and I'm messing stuff up as we speak, actually. Boom, put that back. All right, what's going on? What's going on? Uh, Alex Daly, Antonio, what's going on? Milto, Tessa, Gabriel Hernandez, Alex Daly, I think it said the Andre. Vouse, Terrence, Torrance J Playlist, what's going on, what's going on? Oh, yeah. All right, for the uh, free Bitcoin, who won <laughs> yesterday? Oh, yeah, so for the free Bitcoin, the winner was Crypto Commoner. Thank you for your comment. Uh, one of our newer, newer subscribers, I believe. Uh, on the question based, uh, oh, the, base, the question that we said was, do you think government officials should have to turn over their crypto holdings or release how much crypto they have? Uh, his comment was great because he basically stated what we've said a lot is that the way that things are now, um, you know, public, uh, you know, public officials, their stuff is private and then private citizens, our stuff is public. That should be reversed. And he basically said politicians should disclose how much crypto they, they accept. Oh, there you go. Private people, there's no reason why, uh, even if you work for the government, I should tell you how much crypto I have. Um, and even if I, if I attempted to, that could be skewed based on a number of things. You could sell it, you could use it, um, you could be mining and have more coming. So it is kind of one of those uh, do it if you want. Uh, if you're in, in the uh, Flanders, Ned Flanders game, <laughs> right? Maybe, but most people oh, not. Nah. Deadly, deadly, oh, deadly do good. Yeah, you don't you don't really need to. So uh, good, good crypto commenter uh, uh, with that comment. I already sent those free satoshis, my brother. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. All right, top story, of course, BitHum, world's sixth largest crypto exchange by trade volume has been hacked. Mm. Unfortunately, it looks mm. like hackers have stolen uh, about $30 million worth of crypto from South Korea's leading virtual currency exchange, BitHum. Mm. Cointelegraph Japan reported uh, yesterday, June 19th. <laughs> looks like as a result, all deposits and payments have been temporary uh suspended so <laughs> temporarily just suspend it and bit home of course went to twitter's uh said the same things all deposit and withdrawal services have been stopped for security uh we keep you notice of the restarted service we apologize for your inconvenience and thanks for your understanding oh yeah i know uh and of course uh, everybody's blaming the drop prices in the crypto market on this hat which could, you know, very possibly have something directly to do with it. Mm -hmm. uh, what are your thoughts? Oh, yeah. In the short term, I think uh, it may have dropped it, but it, the price returned in a couple hours. Um, the funny thing about BitHum being hacked uh, not once, not twice, but three times is that they are such a large exchange. How could you not fix this by now? Right. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is like the kid getting bullied over and over, taking your lunch money. Uh, after about the third week of getting fight back, do something. I mean, what are you <laughs> shut down and go go train uh, some <laughs> some security uh, ops people or something? I don't understand how this keeps happening. However, I will say with exchanges, hacks uh, always have quotations because I've never really seen the fallout afterwards. Like, did they catch the hacker? Did they right. recover the money? Um, usually, whenever that comes up, people kind of forget. They forget down the line. Uh, I think BitHum, like yeah, Torrance J play playlist says, kind of a fishy hack. Uh, the whole story behind it, like I, I don't even know what story they could use anymore. It's three times in a year, so I'm pretty sure people won't be using BitHum. Hopefully, they won't be using BitHum, or some people like to call them BitThumb. Uh, right. <laughs> get them out of here. Um, but basically, whoever is uh, is hacking them is is having fun. They just <laughs> right. Yeah, y'all. As just, soon as they come back up, thanks. Just keep tagging them. Money. Keep tagging them. Keep tagging them. As soon as they spend the last thirty million, well, let's go get another thirty. They right. Just, they just keep letting us have it. So uh, hopefully they get that fixed. I don't know how they how they uh, use, uh, use the exchange anymore from here. From Sergeant here Crypto said coordinated attacks to keep the price suppressed. That could be true. Could be true as well. You never um, know. This is crypto. It is crypto. And I would not be surprised. But, you know, if you're a crypto exchange, I wouldn't want my reputation to go down like that. Like, right. you, just, you can just come and take my stuff like over and over. <laughs> come on. Right. They might need to yeah. get on that Las Vegas security protocol. Yeah, exactly. Someone yeah. must pay for these somebody, transgressions. Somebody needs to hammer. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Goldman Sachs CEO uh, is saying people are too arrogant to think crypto won't work out because it's unfamiliar. 
Game recognized game mm. and CEO of Goldman Sachs, Lloyd Blankfein, is looking kind of unfamiliar. <laughs> uh, it's funny how they, this article says he reiterated his positive stance on cryptos. For one, Lloyd Blankfein and Goldman Sachs, just like the rest of Wall Street, has been flip flopping like a fish out of water. All right, oh, they can't make up their mind if crypto is real, if it's fake. Do they want it? Do they not want it? Uh, they know it's real. However, they don't want to piss off their institutional. And the credit investors who don't know a lot about crypto in general and who are thinking you know, it's for criminals and scared of it. Uh, so he plays his game every few months, every year or so, where he downs Bitcoin and crypto and all the negative stuff around it. And then literally uh, half a year, a year later, he comes back and say, hey, we have a crypto desk here at Goldman Sachs. Mm -hmm. It looks like this time he is sticking up for crypto. Um, so he's on the crypto side, but he's basically saying that, you know, Gold and silver is replaced by fiat currency, and he thinks, uh, talking about the evolution of money, he can see that happening with crypto. He apparently implied that they both don't have intrinsic value, something we keep trying to tell people. Uh, he said nothing that paper money has managed to become the main form of money, regardless of that. And then he said, why couldn't you have a consensus currency, Bruh. which, of course, is crypto. <laughs> uh, he said, according to Blank Fine, it is too arrogant to argue that cryptos cannot be adopted on a large scale only because they are uncomfortable or unfamiliar. Mm. That's what we see a lot. People are uncomfortable and unfamiliar with crypto, so they say it can't be adopted. And it won't work. Right. Uh, however, well, I want to address the question where you said, why couldn't you have a consensus currency, which is literally in the technical details of how Bitcoin works. It's consensus among people who have never met. Uh, these, this decentralized network it's full of people who I've never met, never going to meet. Uh, they don't need anything other than computing power. This right. is a consensus currency. This is exactly what, th this is the special feature of Bitcoin that we don't have with fiat currency because fiat currency is not consensus, it's forced consensus. You have to do it. It's, I mean, you're born into a system where you have to use fiat currency. If you have consensus from people for something you don't necessarily need, that's real consensus, meaning, okay, I actually want to use this. So, uh, blank fine, I think he kind of misstated there what he meant. And it's, it's crazy to hear CEOs still talk about something that's not real or not, you know, going to be real when their company they uh, own Circle, and of course we know Circle purchased Polynex as well as uh, enabled uh, Bitcoin buying on their their platform. So uh, it's sort of uh, the most flip floppy, wishy washy uh, statement you can make, uh, in my opinion. And here's that, yeah, here is that that flip flopping statement really, where he's kind of on both sides of the fence. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he was talking about in 2017. How some people distrusted, distrusted paper currency at first and later accepted it. Mm -hmm. accepted it. Of course, he implied that the same thing could happen uh, with Bitcoin and crypto. But he's quoted as saying, but there is a lot of things that weren't for me in the past that have worked out very well. If it was 20 years for it and it worked out, I could tell you why it worked out. But based on everything that I know, I'm not guessing that it will work out. So in speaking about Bitcoin and crypto, he's saying uh, a lot of things in the past weren't for him, but they worked out. If you mm -hmm. go 20 years for it and Bitcoin works out, he can tell you why. But based <laughs> on everything that he knows, he's guessing it won't. What? I have no, no clue what no that clue. means, right? <laughs> yeah, like that, that has nothing to do with nothing in my opinion. Right? He just, he's like, whether you're for it or against it, Goldman Sachs is here for you. Yeah, this exactly. might as well come out and say that. Exactly. That yeah, should be whether, the commercial. Whether it wins or loses, Goldman Sachs will be here we, to We're here to charge you a fee. Yeah, no exactly. No matter what. Yeah, we'll no be here what. with fees. Uh, but shout out, I guess, to Lloyd Blank, Blank Fine, at least, for coming out and saying something positive about it. You know, telling people there uh, who are unfamiliar mm -hmm. or uncomfortable with it that they are too arrogant. So yeah. he chooses words better than Jamie Dimon. I right. will say that. Oh, yeah. You can see the difference. Um, Jamie Dimon is more of like, a, no, I hate it. Forget it. And he, Blank Fine is more like, let's just stay in the middle and then we'll do what let's we see do how much money we can make. And let's see. Yeah, exactly. So uh, it's, <laughs> Blank Fine is a little bit smarter, but still. So they're on the fence so hard. You got to choose a side at some point. Right. Uh, UK crypto exchange to launch Litecoin futures. What's going on with mm. the UK and Litecoin futures? Yep. I haven't heard of this one yet. Well, uh, in the UK, there is a platform called Crypto Facilities. They are looking at uh, launching Litcoin, uh, well, Litecoin, which some people call Litcoin now, derivatives. Lit. Uh, it's getting lit. lit as we speak. Um, you know, uh, unlike the Bitcoin futures contracts on CME and CBOE, uh, these will offer both long and short term trading and they'll have Litecoin as the underlying contract. Uh, so you actually get paid in Litecoin. Um, and they, they're stated as saying, you know, we believe our Litecoin dollar future contracts will increase price transparency, liquidity and efficiency Boom. Boom. Um, in the cryptocurrency market. So hopefully it will because they have offered Ethereum futures 
uh, Ripple and Bitcoin futures on their platform. Pretty small as far as volume, but if, like we said before, it's usually copycats. Litecoin futures come out there, then somebody else will offer it somewhere else. Um, I'm anxious to see what happens because if you look at charts, once futures were introduced, pretty much every uh, any any asset once futures were introduced took a dive. Right. Uh, gold, silver, and Bitcoin all uh, experienced because that. Because people are buying the contracts instead of the actual the commodity actual or com- currency. Yeah, exactly. Which makes no sense again, but hey. And that's how that's how they get you. They basically it's the tail wagging the dog. They basically set the price in futures so that when you uh, try to do it with perpetual swaps. That it affects the price long term. CFTC is supposed to be investigating, so to say, but uh, uh, hopefully crypto facilities, they, they can uh, find a way to get some volume in for those Litecoin futures. Right. More yeah. exposure. And smash the like and share button. People, thank you. Much appreciated. Oh, yes. Um, and again, this is one of those things that are pretty interesting. I know it's you know, still early morning in some places, late night in some places, but mm-hmm. you know, you talk about an article like this, Litecoin futures. And of course, there are other sources, not just Cointelegraph, Coindesk, CC, and we just use those because they're the main sources for a lot of people. Mm. Uh, but you know, this article only has forty-seven hundred views, basically, and about two hundred and twenty shares. This is what we mean when we say still early, people. Mm-hmm. It is still early in the game. Uh, people aren't even tracking this type of stuff or this yeah. type of information out there, and this is on a global scale. So that's pretty interesting to me. Oh yeah, absolutely. To see that. All right, of course, another big story: Tether releases transparency update. Vetted by former FBI director's law firm. Finally. Uh, Just finish it up. So here's right. the thing, though. This transparency update, uh, which is basically an audit into Tether, is not official. It's an unofficial audit. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, by FBI. It looks like an FBI was a director. Mm-hmm. Yeah, former FBI director's law firm, who you guess it has three former federal judges also working there. <laughs> I mean, I, I love it. I love the oh, game. Man. Just, just flip flop, public, private. Who cares? Right. So uh, it said it wasn't. It's, they're called Freak Sporkin and Sullivan LLP FSS. Uh, they said while not a formal audit, FSS said it was given full online access to Tether's bank accounts and statements. Uh, basically saying it holds all Tether assets, and they gave some numbers. But again, the key to remember here is that it is not an official audit. Mm -hmm. Um, Tether actually came out and said that we can't actually have an official audit because a lot of audit agencies don't want to take us up on our offer because we're Mm -hmm. crypto-based. Don't know how true that is, you know? Don't know how true that is. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but um, this is what one firm is saying. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, as far as the amount that they have, Bank One, $1.9 billion. Bank Two, $500 million. Total, $2.5 billion, supposedly, in USD balances. They actually had a surplus of seven million, uh, which was interesting to see. Um, about, based to get, on, about to get to printing this weekend. Yeah, exactly. That's what I say. So, oh, we got more. Oh yeah, we actually got extra tether. So oh, let's get that. Uh, going. Even though it's unofficial, um, it's one of those things that I don't think the news for it would come out if they didn't basically want to show, like, look, we don't need you to come audit us. We got somebody else to do it. But I'm sure they'll come anyway just to look. If the official audit shows that they are fully back, I fully believe Tether will take off as far as people using it because then it'll basically give it stability as a stable coin. Meaning that if somebody has the dollar uh, backed amount to fund how much Tether they print, then you can't really blame the market um, like people have before saying uh, Tether was just printed artificially out of thin air, pumped the market. Uh, if that goes away, then I don't know exactly what excuse people have anymore for prices going up and down because right. Tether's been like the, the the black sheep so far. It's just like, well, blame it on Tether. I mean, it was a whole uh, what Twitter account. The guy Bitfinex, his whole right. career was about how Tether manipulated everything. Hopefully, this comes out as true. And uh, you know, if, if that's what they've shown so far, they may have even more. This is only one bank, uh, two bank accounts. So right, uh, we'll see. And it says here again, the company claims, and the company as Tether claims that the reason why it has not undergone a full-scale audit Mm -hmm. is that major accounting firms do not want to incur the risk of performing this service for a cryptocurrency firm. Mm -hmm. I don't know or understand why that's true. I would think it's the opposite. The government wants to know Mm -hmm. how much money a crypto firm has. They are all for an auditing company going in. Uh, They're quoted as saying the bottom line is an audit cannot be obtained. Says Stuart Hogner, uh, Tether's general counsel, he told that to Bloomberg. He said the big four firms are anathema to that level of risk. He said, we've gone for what we think is the next best thing. Mm-hmm. All right. As being a startup in the crypto industry, we can say there are times where it's very difficult to audit. All right. Oh, yeah. You know, that's for sure. 
Uh, and they are right. There are some companies that don't, you know, it's not that they don't want to do it. They don't understand how to do it. <laughs> and actually, even with an audit, a lot of the onus are, is on the owners or whoever had the keys to the accounts. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll say understand where they're coming from on that part. But I will also say it's pretty interesting to see a multi-billion dollar company get away with saying that. It's yeah. different for us to say. It's like, yeah. Yeah, we're two small business owners. Like, yeah, yeah. it's actually tough to do an, an actual audit and stuff. Mm -hmm. But to have a multi-billion dollar company say no one wants to come in and mm -hmm. audit, that's not the truth. Come on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No one wants to come in and charge you guys to audit you mm -hmm. and have the government's approval. Yeah. I am not believing that statement yeah. one bit. Yeah. Well, I will say, just to play uh, devil's advocate. They may actually have figured out that if somebody audits it and they do have what they say, it gives them oh, actual... Oh, that's true. They're actually a real thing. You're about like, to get taxed, too. Exactly. I'm going to so, need a good yeah, three, four hundred million I'm tonight. Need, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, Jizzy Mac, yeah, he was saying Tesla just put the money in the bank for the snapshot, then it's back into making more and money. that's for true them. as well. That, that could be true. But they did do the audit uh, without telling them they were going to do it, so to say. They this, said, this, they this said is, they, is they, what they're telling they us. Said, that's what they're telling this us. This is what they're they telling us. They said that they just surprised audited them and they had the money there. Uh, but I, I tend to believe too. Nobody has two and a half billion just sitting in a bank account. And, I mean, and not only that, I mean, this is private business. In private business, they could pay this private firm uh, mm -hmm. ten, twenty million dollars and say, "Hey, say you did this audit. Mm -hmm. Say it was a surprise. Say it was a surprise. Say all of these things we're mm -hmm. paying you for it." Uh, they can bury that in paperwork so none of us will ever find out. Mm -hmm. And technically, it's not illegal. Um, you know, this firm can choose to take who on and do what they want. Mm -hmm. If that affects their other businesses, and that's their problem. But that's on at the end of the day, I don't think it would. Because worst case scenario, if anyone found out Tether wasn't being upfront and honest, all the firm would have to say is, well, they hid it from us, too. Yeah. Yep. You know? Mm -hmm. um, so, again, this is what's being reported uh, by everybody working together. <laughs> it's kind of like the government and banks reporting oh, regulations. Man. Yeah, can't get rid of uh, of humans. That's right. <laughs> no That's matter right. how much innovation you have, humans are going to be humans. Right. right. U.S. fourth largest mobile provider partners on automotive blockchain platform. Mm. This is a pretty semi-cool article. You like how I did that. Mm -hmm. uh, the U.S. fourth largest mobile network operator Sprint has partnered with blockchain startup NXM Labs to launch a 5G connected car platform powered by blockchain tech. The company's confirmed today, June 20. What is going on mm. with uh, Sprint and NXM Labs. Oh, yeah. Well, it looks like they are getting into the Internet of Things um, and they will be using their services in order to power vehicles. Um, they basically state through the power of blockchain technology. NXM provides an advanced, an advanced level of security and advanced capabilities to vehicles that might not otherwise have it. Even extending Wi-Fi, uh, which a lot is of big words. Yeah, it's a lot of big stuff in there. Basically, what they're saying is, uh, if they can partner with people such as IOTA or with uh, Internet of Things people, they have the security to power your car and for it to not get hacked. Of course, not get hacked. Right. Um, uh, challenge <laughs> accepted. Exactly. I would say challenge. Better stop accepted. saying that. Yeah, here. and people people don't realize that is that that's putting a target on yourself. Like we have the best security. Oh, word, you do? Let's see. Because and now if somebody hacks it, it's like a badge. People. It's it's. it's to them in the hacker community, they'll be you know big time. And also from a money standpoint, if you have competitors and they see, oh, you think you can't be hacked? They have enough money That's to actually well. find a way that yeah. they can. I don't know, social engineer or mess mess up from just the inside. Just to show, just to show yeah. people, they, they told can, everybody it couldn't have been hacked. But oh, hey, and I, we, I, we hacked them in less than a week. I'm not big on Wi-Fi cars. I'm right. gonna tell you that right now. Even though it is a cool thing, and I think that a lot of companies are trying to do this uh, over time. Security will get better. Uh, I just don't think that the Internet of Things is ready for production on a large scale so it, it's good to see they're working on it but we'll, it, it will take some time and i get what they're saying too um as far as the blockchain technology in this sense even though they do use a lot of uh words soup to try to confuse people a bit they are saying that hey with the blockchain technology immutable ledgers we should you know they're thinking we should be able to store all this data to have the wi-fi enabled cars and mm -hmm. everything be secure the only problem again is that these companies sprint uh, NXM is saying using blockchain technology will you own it yeah. will this be a centralized blockchain if so that means there's still a point of failure yeah, you have a database at your company <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> they still don't get that it's still a backdoor entry into that immutable ledger mm -hmm. through your company uh Decentralized, yeah. decentralized, decentralized. That's what they keep. They don't want to go into that. They just want to say blockchain tech. We've seen it with EOS. Because blockchain tech does work. <laughs> but if it's from the company itself, right, like EOS, <laughs> then it doesn't work, people. It's centralized still. You have mm -hmm. to have it decentralized while using blockchain technology. That goes hand in hand. Mm -hmm. and, um, and you're right, Gabriel Hernandez. 
IoT is notoriously insecure. I mean, no, the reason it's not in your homes right now as we speak it's too is new. because it's too new. <laughs> and the second you have Internet of Things, because there are certain people that have right. the Internet of Things in their home. Bill Gates, for example. Right. Very tech-savvy people. They have an Apple or Mac home, whatever they call it. So they're very tech-savvy. They have the security, and it's just them. So they only have to worry about that. Right. When it's widespread and, you, and your mom and grandma have to be able to <laughs> control the TV, toaster, uh, kitchen, and everything with you know Wi-Fi and, and online... That's a, that's a bit different, and it's, it's very far away. Uh, a perfect example of a, of a light scale of Internet of Things that's actually in some homes right now are the Nest. Yeah. Nest thermometers and cameras had those at one of the places. Uh, mm-hmm. And, you know, all connects to your phone. It is amazing. You can do things when you're not home on your Nest uh, thermometer, air conditioning, heat, mm-hmm. camera, like I said. But even I saw the hose in that one. I'm like, all right, it's connected to emails, connected to this. Like, as soon as they get one. All it take, yep, that's it. All it takes is to get one, and mm-hmm. you are in on there. So, um uh, yeah. And again, with something like that getting hacked, you can't control a lot, but just the fact that it can be done. Oh, yeah. Um, you're talking about, like you said, having toasters and fridges and all that. Mm-hmm. The security layer isn't built yet to where it can withstand a big hack. So nah, yeah, it's yeah. not ready. Ale- Alexa. Yeah, people people hack baby monitors. Yep. Oh, yeah. It's, G- not, it's not ready. Been hacked. It's definitely not ready, but as you as you can see, they got to put the news out to say, right. "Oh yeah, we're we're getting into blockchain technology." I'm sure Sprint will see a a, a nice bump in their uh, their stock. Oh yeah, you know, we'll hear about it tomorrow. Biggest oh, yeah. bump in uh, how many years? <laughs> and last but not least, oh man, this is this story is a very interesting story. Uh, <laughs> you all in the comments, let us know how you feel about it. But singer Akon announces cryptocurrency and plans for real life Wakanda. Of course, based off the movie Black Panther. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, and they were so disrespectful with the way. Oh, listen, CoinDesk, we're about <laughs> oh, to call man. you out, CoinDesk. CoinDesk. Dan Higgins <laughs> at Coinbase. Listen. We're not saying we're mad at you. We will say it was pretty funny, but so disrespectful. It's so disrespectful. Uh, when they talked about this story, they said, you know, they mentioned Akon, who's on the list of other celebrities who are launching their own cryptocurrencies, and they stated the 45-year-old Smack It singer. <laughs> oh, man. Not the guy who brought electricity to certain regions in Africa. Yeah. But not, the Smack It singer. And that's not even his best song. song is trash. What about Locked Up? Yeah, was it Locked Up was one yeah, of Yeah, Locked Up was the best one. Come on. The 45-year-old hey, Smack It singer. Hey. <laughs> announced Monday at Cannes Lions International Festival of Creativity that he is not only launching his own crypto a coin, but also using his <laughs> Acon Crypto City, a 100% crypto based city in Africa. Uh, here's the thing. Now, if you didn't know, last year was it last year, year before, a couple mm-hmm. years ago, yeah. Acon brought electricity, uh, supposedly brought electricity to some of the regions in Africa. Uh, notable theme, you know, philanthropo, uh, I can't even say the word. Uh, philosophical, all that good stuff, mm-hmm. and everybody's behind them for that. But having your own city and coin a coin mm-hmm. uh, seems a bit scamish, Acon. All right, <laughs> you gotta call it for what it is, man. We hope it's not. It sounds, and I mean, granted, you being the uh, what is it? His position here mm-hmm. is the visionary. Yeah, the, yeah, he's the chief visionary. He said he's quoted as saying in the article. He just figures out all the the, the uh, what he wants to do, and he lets the geeks figure out. There you go. I come up with concepts and let the geeks figure it out. Of course, we understand that. But Akon, whoever, <laughs> which I'm assuming is your CEO Ryan Scott or John Karras, who convinced you to have your own coin in your own city, don't let backed him. by that coin, stop listening to him. Don't let him get you caught up, man. If it was really for the community and this wasn't a scam, you would not call it a coin or mm. name your city Akon. Yeah, like it's, it's what I'll say. If you just you just did it, um, just do it. If it was a cryptocurrency company. Uh, you wanted to issue cryptocurrency to people to use in a certain place, you would just do it. Uh, however, I think branding wise, the people in his ear, they want to use his name. As you can see, we're talking about it. I'm sure right. other people will. And uh, it's it's one of those ideas that have gone along with the theme of what we said, where people are trying to spread out, decentralized completely. People have their own cities, use their own tokens. Their own which, is cool. which is cool. Which is the cool part. Uh, however, like we said, we're not a big fan of the branding part of it, where people try to make themselves you know, put the, at the front of it. Uh, like, this is my coin. I created it. Because if you have a single point of attack or if you have one person that you can go after, then you can basically destabilize from there. I mean, it's, it's one of those things you just kind of want to put it out, see if it works. And if you have a plan in motion, it'll work itself out. If you teach people the technology, they'll build dApps. They'll build the tokens. So... Uh, we'll see. We'll see how it works out. Building from the ground up, not not going to be easy, easy. Very long project, I can say. Um, and the thing is, again, we're just looking at this bio page. You know, they say a coin token, a new mm-hmm. cryptocurrency slash digital wallet with an integrated ecosystem of DApps. 
that will provide immediate and ongoing new revenue generating opportunities and micro exchanges to stimulate and support youth entrepreneurship, economic stability, and growth in Africa. Ooh. Again, so for someone time. who doesn't really know, this sounds amazing. Mm -hmm. For those who do know, this is a lofty project. Yeah. Not saying it can't be done, uh, but again, just the fact that your name's on it and all that, is, it, it seems scamish, man. Yeah. And, and we hope it's not. I'm not saying it will be. Again, you might have got some bad advice mm -hmm. or you know, even had lofty vision yourself, but uh, I hope it works um, yeah. because, that, like you said, that is the next thing that's going to happen. Everybody's going to have their own cities and mm -hmm. start developing their own coins and, and countries and tokens. Oh, uh, so good stuff, but very lofty yeah. goal right there. Because if we had to go through all of the people who promoted coins, it's I mean, right. the list is ridiculous. I mean, all of them have fallen through. Paragon, gone. And who's right. promoting at the game? Uh, what's the the card? Central card. Centra. DJ yeah. Khaled and Floyd Mayweather. Floyd gone. Mayweather. He didn't Paris do like Hilton. three of them. I don't know what she was promoting. Some some <laughs> right. trash. Gone. Jamie uh, Foxx was a Cobbin Hood. Yeah, yeah. Cobbin Hood. Gone. My right. boy Nipsey had to get with follow coin. Uh, gone. And I was like, ah. was <laughs> why it had to be you, Nipsey? Ah, my boy Nipsey. <laughs> we hate it but, had to be you. So it's just it's one of those things where these people they come with what they perceive as good ideas. People right. like us can read straight through it, and then they basically say, oh, yeah, you just put your face on it. Uh, we'll, you, you know, we'll call it whatever. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll uh, basically, we can build out these ideas for you. And then later, it comes down the line, like, yeah, they, they raised money, didn't do anything. Hopefully, this is different. That's right. Again, we are, we are we're positive because Akon has been doing some great mm -hmm. things. We want this to work. But mm -hmm. we're also saying Akon looks... <laughs> Straight up scammy, dog. <laughs> like you gotta <laughs> fire everybody working with you right now and just restart or yeah. something because it looks bad. Uh, but yeah, that's that. Other than that, yeah, it even looks like. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was gonna leave like it alone. Like the coin itself. Oh man. I uh, want to give some shout outs to some of the comments. S one Dub said uh, mm -hmm. they were working with uh, Ericsson on some IoT mm -hmm. use cases back in 2014. That which is very cool. And they said security is still Swiss cheese, just not ready yet. That's what's up, S one mm -hmm. Dub. We gotta talk to you. Uh, oh, yeah. I've been around. Uh, Gabriel Hernandez said the best place to put an Alexa in your home is in the trash can. Uh, it's too funny. <laughs> I've heard that too many times. Yeah. Uh, okay. It looks like all right. All right everybody, Crypto Q says Smack That is probably his biggest crossover hit. Yeah. A few other people saying Smack That is big. All right. Well, pardon us. Uh, I mean, I, I know it was a big hit, but the song was trash. It just, <laughs> it just sounded it just sounded disrespectful coming out. I don't yeah. know. Well, pardon us to. Uh, Coin, coin desk then and stand. <laughs> All right. If that was the biggest hit, we were and wrong. At 45, you got to switch up how you introduce people. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's all we're saying. If it was 25-year-old Smack It singer, uh, oh, we understand. At 45, you got to start getting into his business, entrepreneurial stuff. Right. Um, so, yeah. And, you know, one of the things I want to point out, uh, Neek385 just said this. I love the follow coin ideal, but they didn't have enough people. So that's actually a, a real issue, though, on the business side somebody has to look at. Same with Acoin a and Acon mm -hmm. or whatever. Will you have enough people to make this work to build this futuristic city mm -hmm. and to uh, you know have all these have this uh, community around this ecosystem because mm -hmm. it's going to take that. Yep. So that's why I think the biggest thing is, uh, and every time a new coin gets made at this point, since it's still so new, I think they're just taking away market share in long yep. term, mm -hmm. or at least in the short long term, three to five years. It's going to be tough mm -hmm. to actually have a market around you. So. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of consolidation. Trust me. Right. Uh, a lot of these coins is just jumping, just throwing, <laughs> just throwing stuff at the wall, seeing what sticks. Yeah. Um, so yeah. All right. Other than that, uh, for the free Bitcoin, what are we doing? Oh, yeah. For the free Bitcoin. Of course, we're going to keep this conversation going. Uh, the, a lot of people have tried to start their own tokens, start their own countries. For my followers, what are the top three things you need to start your own crypto Ooh, community? Wow. What are those three things? I'm interested to hear because some people think it's more economic. Some people think it's more social. Some people think it's, uh, you know, different. Some different people aspects. like marketing. Marketing, marketing. We don't market need nothing else. Let us know. <laughs> we uh, say it might work, some though. Some people need guns. Uh, whatever <laughs> hey. you think. What are the top three things to, you need to build a successful crypto community? Let us know. Put your uh, public address and we'll send those free Satoshis. That is a really good one. Oh, yeah. All right. Other than that, happy hump day. Hump day. We will see you all tomorrow early at 10 ish with more crypto news. Until then, make sure you check us out at KirbyCrypto.com. Absolutely. And uh, check out some of these good packages we have going on for you. Oh, yeah. Other than a whole that, lot of deals. talk to you soon. Cheers. Have a good one.